are so honored to be here to tell you just a little bit about AFC. At Autism Families Connecticut, we believe that all children and teens on the autism spectrum should have access to recreational, social, and educational activities as an integral part of enjoying a full, balanced, active, and well-rounded life. So we have dedicated ourselves to designing and running programs where kids and teens can become active, have multiple opportunities for fun, that's capital F-U-N, and build meaningful friendships in a safe, structured environment. I'd love for you to get a sense of our programs, so I brought a short video, and I hope you'll indulge me, so that you can get a little taste of what we do. And with the Doug Flutie Foundation support, we have done even more. To give you a little idea, when we started our tiny little organization just almost six years ago, the Doug Flutie Jr. Foundation for Autism was an integral part of launching our very first Playing on the Spectrum program. That's the gym program that you saw some of our younger kids in. They are able to come hang out with staff and volunteers, learn gross and fine motor skills, social skills, and most important, that capital F-U-N. Today, that four-week program that we run five months a year in the winter, six years later, is full consistently. 36 kids with waiting lists. Most of our families wish we would do it year-round. We haven't gotten there yet, but we will. The Flutie Foundation has continued to support Autism Families Connecticut over the years, and two years ago, when we heard the growing need for teens and teen activities, we decided to expand our reach. I don't know who was doing the thinking, a three-year-old organization doesn't grow quite that quickly. But we went to the Flutie Foundation and we asked them for a grant to try teen programs. We didn't really know what they might look like, but we knew that teens needed to get out of the house, needed to make friends, and have fun. We launched our program at about five or six times the first year, and this past year, our second year, we are a monthly program, which I think is phenomenal, but my teens are mad because a month long, uh, once a month is not enough. Our programs are truly designed for fun for our kids, for our teens, for our staff, and our volunteers. But it's not just about fun, because we have seen our children and teens who participate in our programs grow in some really phenomenally exciting ways. I've brought with me today Fern McAllister, the mother of one of our teens, Nick, who will tell you a little bit about our teen night impact on her son. Fern. Thank you all. Um, my son, Nick, is a very caring and loving young man. He's been diagnosed with a variety of um, issues, ASD, ID, schizoaffective disorder, severe anxiety, severe depression, and compulsions. Uh, by the way, we also have another child who is on the, uh, on the spectrum, and she's bipolar. So our house needs lots of structure. And uh, we need activities that are geared specifically for our children. But this is about Nick. He has worked very hard to overcome all his obstacles. And he is aware that he is not a neurotypical person. He very much wishes he could be. He longs to be accepted. And he is saddened that many times when he's reached out for relationships, he has not been successful, even though he's a very social child. Two years ago, I discovered that uh, the AFC teen night would be taking place and asked Nick if he would like to participate. And he was, he was very happy that there was something for him. He wasn't sure that this would be um, something that he could enjoy. But from the very first teen night, he felt accepted. Nick loves teen night now more than any other activity. 
Staff has made him feel that he is a valued member of the group. He loves visiting with the volunteers. He uh, loves anticipating what each program will bring. And he loves that he can choose what activity to try and looks forward to see what is planned for the next month. Generally, after te each teen night, uh, the first thing he says to me is, when is the next teen night? Sometime during his 19th year, it dawned on him that he would be aging out of the teen night program. And he pondered this for some time. And finally, he concluded that he could continue if he was a volunteer. Well, that would never have occurred to me, but in thinking about it, he has made so much progress. Um, and he's a very social person, as Dr. Cassidy is aware, and she's uh, staff on Jenkins Center, a fabulous uh, school in Connecticut. Um, and he, he decided that uh, he would ask Mary Helen if he could volunteer. And lo and behold, she said yes. So Nick was thrilled. He's now 20. He gets a name badge. He gets to greet people. He gets to pass out pizza. He gets to greet new members. Um, he, he feels he's solely in charge of making people feel welcome and comfortable. And it is his big joy. He could go to meetings. It was exciting for him. We are so grateful to this organization and to the Doug Flutie Foundation for funding many of the activities. Thank you. And Fern didn't tell you, but last month at Teen Night, I had a new clinician who was volunteering to help out. And I said to Nick, Nick, you're in charge. Show him the ropes. And he did. It was phenomenal. So since our humble beginning six years ago, the Flutie Foundation has been a major supporter of our programs. Without the Flutie Foundation, we would not have gotten started. Or maybe if we'd have gotten started, the road would have been much more difficult. Words cannot truly accurately express our extreme gratitude for this continued support. It has allowed us to grow, to try new ideas, and to positively impact the lives of more children and teens who are living with autism in the state of Connecticut. We at Autism Families Connecticut count the Flutie Foundation as a supporter, a valuable partner, and a very dear friend. For all you have done and continue to do for us, we thank you. <laughs>